Hey all you people, what's going on? So the last video I left you with was the install of the RE ignition coils and spark plugs. Now those are gonna give me a reliable spark, run cooler, and be more durable in the long run, which is great if you have any sort of ECU tune. There's a couple things I thought I'd cover in this video. A quick update on the GTI, my future plans with it, repairs, and my future plans with the channel in general. A couple of videos back, I, I mentioned this disconcerting sound coming from the engine, and I was sort of in full panic mode. I just installed the downpipe and me being a complete novice, thought I had screwed something up, which I probably did. And a bunch of possibilities ran through my head as to what could be wrong with the car. Head gasket, rod bearing, rod knock, timing chain. And what's crazy is that the issue ended up being a combination of two different comments left on the video that I had posted. So thank you very much for those comments, car people. Issue number one, timing chain. Issue number two, well, actually this is more of just a realization than an issue, is a aftermarket clutch. So the timing chain, more specifically, the timing chain tensioner is a known weak spot of the early two liter TSI engines. If this part fails on an engine, it can have catastrophic effects, resulting in the engine skipping timing and parts just clashing into one another, potentially resulting in an absolute wreck of a motor. At the time, I had thought Volkswagen Audi Group had their shit together and issued updating timing chain tensioners into their 2014 model year vehicles. But if my car is a 2014 model year, that means it was probably manufactured sometime in 2013 using the original tensioner. Anyhow, I got that fixed. It took a few days and ended up costing like a grand and a half using OEM parts. Now, as for the aftermarket clutch, this one I'm still not 100% sure about, mostly because I don't have the knowledge to inspect a clutch, nor do I have the tools to do so, I think. But the sound coming from the GTI that sounded like engine knock was actually from the flywheel. I know this because it only makes the sound at lower RPMs in neutral with the clutch engaged. So I think that it's an aftermarket clutch setup with a single mass flywheel. And what that basically means is when engaged, the flywheel has direct contact with the clutch assembly. Single mass flywheels are more durable and rev quicker than dual mass flywheels, but unfortunately they make for a bit of a, a rougher clutch engagement and produce a noise called clutch chatter because there's more of a direct connection to the engine that's just chattering away. Now a dual mass flywheel basically has two flywheels and one that the pressure plate connects to which engages to the clutch. So you have these two flywheels right here and these flywheels have this sort of rotational spring in between them that absorbs some of the drivetrain shock and harshness when you go to engage the clutch. Unfortunately, dual mass flywheels are a little heavier and can't take the abuse that single mass flywheels can. So yeah, so yeah, I mean, that surprised me when someone suggested that and it, I think it's actually true. So two videos ago, I had done an install on the Unitronic cold air intake. And so far, it's a fantastic intake. The turbo spools quicker, the sounds that it makes are glorious. But I have this thing where up above 4,000 RPM, it makes this really pronounced whining sound, especially when there's a lot of load on the engine. So I contacted Unitronic support and they told me that getting a diverter valve relocator kit would help with that noise. I'm not entirely sure how, but I'm gonna figure it out and I'll do an install video on that too and see how it sounds. So let me give you guys a quick rundown on what my future plans are for the GTI. Right now I have a downpipe, intake, and stage two tune, which is actually gonna be the main focus of my next video coming out. So here's a quick list of the next few mods that I have planned for the car. And this is an order from most important to least. First on the list is a stage two clutch and diverter valve. I think that these these two are of the same importance because they both really need to get done. My clutch is slipping a bit in high load situations, mainly when I roll onto the throttle pretty hard in fourth, fifth or sixth gear. And obviously you guys just heard that awful noise coming from the diverter valve. So yeah, that needs to be addressed. So third on my list after those two things is a wave track limited slip differential. I'm putting this next on the list because the tune has seriously introduced some torque steer and having an LSD is also going to help maximize traction off the line too. Because right now flooring it in first and second gear is pretty much useless. <laughs> There's so much torque. The next thing I'd probably do is a stiffer dog bone mount. Uh, maybe at the same time as the differential 
or the clutch or something. And this is a really, really cheap mod that's gonna help control wheel hop when accelerating. Following that, the next thing on my list is a cat back exhaust. Now there's a lot, there's a lot of options out there. And it's funny because everything I've done up to this point has been Unitronic brand. But that being said, I really love the sound of this APR catback exhaust. And major props to APR for continuing developing stuff for the Mark VI GTI. A lot of the aftermarket exhaust companies have gone a little too far and made their exhaust sound too hollow and I guess the best way I would describe it is like trumpety. I don't think that's a certified adjective, but if you know what I mean, then you know what I mean. And lastly, from my mod list, at least for right now anyway, is to get new coils uh, or something to do the suspension. I really wanna keep the car as stock looking as possible because I'm a really strong believer in matching the aesthetic of the car with the performance of the car. I want something that says, not your stock GTI, but also not a stage three Golf R. <laughs> so I'd probably just get coils that lower the car anywhere from an inch to two inches, giving it a bit more of an aggressive stance without taking it over the top. And also maybe in the future, I'll look at getting some dedicated summer tires, but right now my, my Michelins, my all seasons are pretty fantastic. So those are definitely down there on the list. And <clears throat> uh, as for future plans for the Not So Handy Car Guy channel, well, I am very glad you asked. Hopefully 2020 is gonna be a big year for us. We're closing in on a thousand subscribers here, which means soon I'll be able to monetize my content, therefore putting whatever I earn back into the channel. And one of my goals is to do more collabs with people too. I hope to do some collabs with my friends over at Elevated Media. And uh, Driven by Boost and a couple other great channels out there. Certainly check out their content. Both Connor's three series and uh, Chris's Golf R would absolutely smoke my GTI. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. But hey, it is, it's not a competition. Um, not yet at least, until we race and, and then, then it's a competition. And then I'll, I'll still be put to shame. All right, thank you guys so much for stage two, tuning in to the update. <laughs> See what I did there. If you enjoy my videos, feel free to like and subscribe for future updates on the GTI. And I, I also do more videos than just GTI videos from, from totally stupid videos to even more stupider videos with uh, some horrible impressions thrown in the mix. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, and you can support these impressions by visiting my Patreon, it's brand spanking new. And that is linked in the description below. On that note, take care now, bye bye then. <laughs>